Hiya folks, it's Brad, and I'm coming to you tonight, or today, or whenever you're watching this, from the home of Jeff Hardy in Akron, Ohio. That's who I'm staying with. And that's his base over there that I will probably be playing on Friday night at Jilly's when Zero Defects plays here in Akron at Jilly's, and Saturday when Zero Defects plays in Annabelle's, at Annabelle's. Tonight, though, I will be at the Universalist Unitarian Church in Cleveland Heights, uh, talking about the Heart Sutra, and I'm going to talk about that in a minute, but what I want to do first, after I show you my t-shirt, which is aliens, what I want to do first is an unboxing video. This is a box of copies of Letters to a Dead Friend about Zen, and I have not seen the book yet. I've seen pictures of what the cover looks like and things, but I've never seen the book. So I'm going to unbox these for you right here, live on the internet. Or not live, but you know, live enough. So, let's see. There we go. Cut the box. you got to see me cutting the box to make it a true unboxing video. Okay, there it is. Got some bubble wrap on it. And, whoa, there's the book, Letters to a Dead Friend About Zen. This is the first time I have seen it, and there's the back cover with, the, with me on there. So that's, uh, that's what I look like. Oh, well, that's what I looked like a couple years ago. So this is the book. Exciting, huh? So when you get the book, I want you to do something for me. I want you to go to page 221 and look in the final paragraph and there's a part where it says right there it's a second to last line on the page it says a couple of times i stayed with moby in his place just cross out the word stayed and write hung hung out so just cross out the word stayed and write hung out but try to write it a little better than i did there I don't know how that happened. I'm going to take responsibility for it, though. It's sometimes when you're editing a book, uh, it it just you're you're moving sentences here and there and cutting things out, and I I don't know how I missed that. But the word "stayed" implies that I like spent the night at his place, or or that I spent some days there or something. But I didn't really. Uh, there were uh, two or three times when I went up to his place and just hung out with him for a couple hours. So that's, I never stayed the night or anything. But there's the book. Isn't that neat? Tonight I'm going to be at the Universalist Unitarian Church in Cleveland Heights, like I said. And I am going to be there at 7 o'clock. So uh, I'm going to talk about the Heart Sutra. And the reason I'm going to talk about the Heart Sutra is I kind of thought of this cheesy tie-in because a lot of people in Ohio, they're, they're, they've tried to promote the nickname The Heartland for for Ohio from a few years ago in promotions and stuff. I don't know how well it stuck, but uh, so I thought a Heart Sutra Heartland. I made this stupid little cheesy tie-in. But the other reason I am doing it is I wrote a letter to Marky, you know, as in the, the concept of this book is a bunch of letters to my friend Marky who has recently died, and Marky is based on two people I knew who actually did die when I was on tour in Europe in 2014. I never wrote a letter to Marky for the book uh, about the Heart Sutra. And the reason I didn't write a letter to Marky for the book about the Heart Sutra is because I wrote a chapter about the Heart Sutra in my first book, uh, Hardcore Zen. And it's one of these chapters that uh, people have complimented me on for a long time. And uh, I hate to say it, but I think they're right. <laughs> I think I, I think I did a, a, a pretty good chapter on the Heart Sutra, if I must say so myself. And so I didn't want to repeat what I already said in my other book. And besides that, there's a lot of other sort of basic Zen Buddhist topics I could cover other than the Heart Sutra. So I left the Heart Sutra out. Then after a while, I started started thinking, ah, I probably shouldn't have left the Heart Sutra out completely. I should have done a, at least a little bit on it. So uh, to make up for that, I wrote this Heart Sutra letter to read to Marky, or uh, letter to Marky to read to the people at the Universalist Unitarian Church tonight. And that will be also part of my podcast. There's going to be a podcast called Letters to a Dead Friend About Zen. 
And that will be one of the episodes I'll record tonight. We'll have the Heart Sutra letter in. Maybe uh, in the future that will be collected in a second book of letters to a dead friend. We'll see if that happens. So that's why I'm writing about the Heart Sutra. The, the book, uh, Hardcore Zen, was heavily edited by the editor in charge of things at Wisdom Publications, and he changed a lot of the book, much to my displeasure at the time. I'm kind of okay with it now, but I didn't like the way it was uh, done. But that was one of the chapters that he mostly left alone, <laughs> which, is, which is funny because it's the chapter I get the most compliments on is the one that he pretty much stayed away from. So there you go, for whatever that's worth. I was on Twitter uh, last night because I was sitting at the Houston airport waiting for a much delayed flight to Akron. So my flight went LA to Houston, Houston to Akron. And so I shouldn't go on Twitter, but I said something about... Uh, uh, Tricycle Magazine had put up a, a list of uh, the best Buddhist books for beginners. And I'm in there, like at the very, very end. They mentioned, oh, by the way, there's a book called Hardcore Sound by Brad Horner. <laughs> and I put something on Twitter like, yeah, as if I didn't write five other books that are better than 99% of what's on this list. Which I think made a few people... I'm, I might have lost some Twitter followers with that, but I, the, when I say things like that, I'm not trying to be arrogant. You know, I'm not trying to be like, hey, I'm the best Buddhist writer there ever was. <laughs> it's not that. I'm depressed by that. I'm actually sad that I write some of the best Buddhist books out there because I think, I think there should be better books. You know, I honestly, honest to God in heaven and Buddha and Nirvana and everything else, I would like to be in the bottom, like in the actual bottom, like where Tricycle put me but where I shouldn't have been put. Uh, I would like to be that as bad as Tricycle thinks I am. Or, or let's say it, I would like to have other books be as much better than mine as Tricycle seems to think they are. But Tricycle is wrong. The, the books I write are better than the ones that they suggest for beginners, like miles better. And I don't think that's a good thing. I really don't think that's a good thing. I think there should be better books for beginners, but the ones they're recommending as better than mine are not. And that makes me sad. Uh, I, I honestly think, uh, I don't know why there aren't better Buddhist books than the ones I write, because I, I don't think, well, I mean, I think mine are good. I wouldn't be writing if I didn't think they were good, and I wouldn't be honest if I told you I didn't think they were good. But I, I, I think there should be better. The, somebody asked on Twitter, like, which ones do I think are better? And I would say the, the books I actually like uh, that are coming out now. Shohaku Okamura does terrific work, and every book by him is worth reading. Dining Katagiri never actually wrote a book in the sense of typing it out on a on a typewriter or whatever, but they collected a bunch of his lectures into books. Those are great. They recently put out a book of Kobenchino's lectures. Kobenchino was my first teacher's teacher, and it's called Embracing Mind, and that is really good. And the sad thing about Embracing Mind is that it's self-published. And, and, and self-publishing is not a, a you know, in and of itself a bad thing, and they did a pretty good job of self-publishing it because it looks good and it doesn't, you know, it's not all messy like a lot of self-published books are. But it, it makes me sad that they, they couldn't find a, a, a real publisher, you know, like a, you know, a dedicated publisher to put out that book because it's terrific, you know, and, and it makes me sad that you, you have to order it on Amazon. It looks like it's a print-on-demand thing, and it shouldn't be. That should be you know, out there as one of the, the great published books, and it should be on Tricycle's list, but it's not. So, you know, uh, you know, you, you can choose to believe that I'm just arrogant about this and that I think I'm, I'm you know, the bee's knees or whatever, but honestly, I, I think my books are good, but um, when I say that I'm better than others, it's not because I think I'm so great. It's because I think most of the stuff that, that gets out there is just not that good. So, uh, you know, there you go. That's me uh, being arrogant and telling you about my book. 
and come see me tonight at the Universalist Unitarian Church in Cleveland Heights. I will also be speaking in Akron at the Akron Public Library, Highland Square Branch at 11 o'clock in the morning a.m. Uh, that's on Saturday and Zero Defects on Friday at Jilly's and Saturday at Annabelle's. And I will also be on October 25th at uh, Venice, California, uh, Mystic Journey Bookstore. That's it. So we'll see you later. I hope you enjoy your life and enjoy the book when you get it. Um, you can get it from me tonight and Saturday if you want, and uh, or uh, or just order it from your favorite online seller or go to a bookstore. Bookstores need your support, so go to your, go to a bookstore even if it costs more. It's worth it to support your local bookstore. I that's that's what I say. It's good karma. See you later. Bye.